I am now honored to introduce our final awardee of the evening, Manoj Singh from the class of 1976. He has a fan club here. As the retired chief operating officer of Deloitte from 2007 to 2015, Manoj was instrumental in guiding the world's largest professional services firm through the complexity of today's global economy. He was one of the four managing directors reporting to the global CEO. Prior to this, Manoj was based in Hong Kong as the CEO of the Asia Pacific region of Deloitte from 2003 to 2007. He previously led the Americas region of Deloitte Consulting until 2003. Manoj is an accomplished advisor to the world's largest corporations on matters of mergers and acquisitions, globalization, financial transformation, and the effective use of technology. He has been recognized as one of the top 25 consultants in the United States by Consulting Magazine. An active alumni speaker and event sponsor, Manoj has served on Carnegie Mellon University's Board of Trustees since 2007. He is a member of the Executive Committee, Chair of the Audit Committee, and Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. In addition, he serves the Tepper Schools Business Board of Advisors and the Board of Directors of the U.S. India Business Council. For his impressive career accomplishments, coupled with his lifetime of outstanding service, to the Tepper School of Business and Carnegie Mellon University, it is our privilege to award Manoj the 2016 Tepper Distinguished Achievement Award. Thank you, thank you, Laurie. President Suresh, Provost Janian, Dean Damon, members of the Tepper faculty and staff and fellow alumni. I'm just delighted to be here uh, in one of my favorite cities in the world, and it's a place that I still get to spend, uh, be here four or five times a year. So it's really a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you very much for the recognition. Uh, I'm truly humbled and truly honored. And uh, now I have the uh, daunting task to share a few profound thoughts with people that I grew up with, so it's always difficult. But before I go there, I just want to recognize uh, a few people um, close to me who are here in the, in the audience. Uh, my daughter, Manisha, and her husband, Sudhir. Manisha, as, uh, as uh, Dr. Suresh said, is a, is a Tepper alum from the class of 05. And uh, our friends, Hemant and Darshana. Hemant is uh, also a Tepper alum from the class of uh, 75, and they had their 40th reunion last year. <clears throat> I was uh, not quite 22 years old uh, when I first uh, descended upon the city, fresh out of India. As a matter of fact, Sunil is sitting here. Uh, Sunil and I are good friends. Uh, we were together on the same flight. We didn't know each other. And as we introduced ourselves, we found out not only we are going to the same university, uh, but to the same program. And uh, last night, uh, we got together our class of 76, as most of our, my colleagues are here, and we are going through the, through the college roster uh, from, from our entry class. And I think both of us concluded that we, looked, uh, we look a lot better today than we did back then, contrary to popular wisdom. <clears throat> this has been a wonderful journey, and one of the uh, retired leaders at Deloitte used to say, that it's not about where you start, but where you finish. And I say that to just put in perspective, uh, my, my first uh, month over here, a couple of months, was a period of, uh, of intense change and really getting uh, indoctrinated to American culture. I was picked up at the airport by an host family uh, from Butler uh, with whom I spent the first week. And I still have a very vivid memory emerging from the Fort Pitt Tunnel and the first view that you get of the city of Pittsburgh. Came here to campus and uh, there's two stories uh, I share with you, uh, brief stories about, uh, about why it's important not where you start but where you finish. So I must have been on campus about uh, four or five days or so, I went to the campus post office. I wanted to uh, buy some stamps and mail something. 
And just to put it in perspective so that you understand the context, uh, back in those days when you walked to a post office in India, there usually would be a, a bottle of glue sitting on the counter after you bought whatever you did, you used it to seal the envelope, put your stamp, whatever it is. So I purchased the stamp and I was uh, looking for this bottle of glue and I couldn't see anything. I said, this is wonderful, you know, this is some of the most prosperous countries in the world, they don't have any glue here. And I was looking around and finally I saw something uh, liquid out there and dipped my finger in it, sealed the envelope, and I should have just left after that. And I wouldn't have had to share the story. But the lady sitting behind the counter, I told her, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, the glue isn't very good. And she said, sir, that was my black coffee. <laughs> that was the first story. The second, and I should have said, my wife is not here. Um, Rita had to uh, attend a wedding of a close uh, family cousin in India. But she was with me, and she's been a part of this journey uh, when I started. So to help uh, support ourselves, I took a job at the uh, Tartan Grill, and I was uh, manning the ice cream counter uh, on Friday nights and Saturday nights from 9 to 1, the busiest period. And uh, again, to understand, you know, when I grew up in India, there are only three flavors of ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, and maybe strawberry. So here I'm behind this counter, and there must have been at least just, just five flavors of chocolate itself, dark chocolate, regular chocolate, chocolate chip, coffee that looked like chocolate. So all these kids coming in on a Friday, Saturday night, having a good time, they want a scoop of this kind of chocolate. I'd be scrambling to find and give them the right flavor. And then there were so many complaints that, forget about graduating from Tepper, I was concerned that I would not be able to hold my job because the manager kept giving me warnings for the first three weekends about making sure that I took proper care of my clients. So that was a great learning, going from three flavors of ice cream to 20 flavors. But anyway, I'm the last speaker, and I don't want to take too much of your time. Ours was a cozy group. Uh, the biggest debate last night was how big was our class and the fact that we were the top five school at that time. This is in 1974. But I could, uh, in many ways for me, GSIA was a crucible uh, for the things I was going to experience later on in life whether it was the international composition of the class and what I was exposed to in Deloitte in terms of, a, of, a, of an organization that had a presence in 100 countries and a leadership group of 15 that consisted of uh, people from 10 different countries, whether it was the simplicity of the class and the lack of arrogance, uh, which taught me in life that you treat people the way you like to be treated, or whether it was simply the competitive element uh, in a small class, but you also learned that during good times, you're not as good as you think you are, and during tough times, you're not as bad as you think you are. But the one thing that I wanted to share with you was about the school and perhaps the university being a stealth brand. And I'll draw a parallel with my own experience at Deloitte, where I spent 35 years. Deloitte at that time, when I started, was one of the smallest uh, in the group of consulting firms, professional services firms that were uh, normally talked about. And over a period of time, with thoughtful strategies and decent execution, we worked our way up to a point where I was very careful whenever I was in airplanes and things like that, not to pick a fight with anyone, chances it was a client or a Deloitte personal person in one of our 100 countries where we had a presence. So I went through that journey and President Suresh is here, so I'll share this with you, and I think he'll relate to it. When we were recruiting him, and actually in the process of convincing him that he should be interviewing with us, I was part of the uh, trustee committee that was uh, doing the presidential selection. And I remember telling him that this is a stealth brand. I'm talking about the school, about the university. In many ways, once you discover it, you really realize how good it is. He's been here a couple of years, and in many ways he picked up on that thought, and he's been doing a terrific job of getting the word out. And, and what I wanted to share with you is that you are aware of many organizations that have conceptualized greatness, figure out how to achieve greatness, and have been through that journey. And I believe that the university and our school is somewhere in that spectrum. And in many ways I believe that this is the right time uh, for what is happening in our environment. There's a book uh, last year that was a bestseller on the Financial Times McKinsey list. It's written by Martin Ford and it's called The Rise of Robots. 
And it's not, this is not about robots because we have been dealing with robots, particularly at this school, for 40, 50 years. But it's about, uh, it's a little bit of what Joel was talking about, about the, the impact of uh, innovation enabled by technology and, 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 the, and the prolific growth related to that. And you've heard a couple of instances of other alumni who were, who were recognized. And my point is very simple. In many ways, I believe that for this university, the time has come when we are at the perfect intersection of things that are today in demand, technology, entrepreneurship, thoughtful leadership, and you think about the iPhone that several people are holding over here, is perhaps the best example of a combination of technology and liberal arts. And I can't think of a better school that offers both. So in many ways, I just want to conclude with that thought that as you get on a plane tomorrow or in a car headed home, think about what you can do to get the word out about this university and what you can do to stay connected and help uh, the university through this journey. Because I really believe that this place is positioned very well for the future and for things to come. Thanks a lot again for this honor and look forward to chatting with you.